Do you want a quick way to add drama and depth to your cards using your outline stamps? Well, stay tuned because I'm going to show you one of my favorite techniques that does just that using the new painter flower, African Daisy. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created both of these cards with similar technique that features heat embossing, ink blending, and lots of splatters. Hi guys, it's Jenny, and today's product focus is the Painter Flower African Daisy. Because this was just released as part of the monthly subscription for Painter Flower, I wanted to give you a close-up look at it. As with all the other Painter Flowers, it features a beautiful floral outline image, along with a number of coordinating scripty sentiments and some bold sentiments that you can pull together to create your full sentiment for your card. Now I often like to watercolor or no line watercolor or alcohol ink marker or pencil color in my painter flowers but sometimes there's not always time for that or you may not be in a coloring mood so I'm going to show you how you can use your outline stamps particularly those detailed ones you get in painter flowers with heat embossing and ink blending to give a really deep bold look it's a technique I've used quite a lot of times before on other cards and people always give me more comments than I'd ever expect for something that's actually quite simple and easy to do, particularly when compared to no line coloring, for example. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. I'm creating both a mini slimline card and a standard A2 size card. Now, the first thing you wanna do is grab some colored cardstock. That's the first trick. We're not gonna ink blend our entire panel. We're gonna grab some colored cardstock a little bit lighter than what you actually want the overall card to be right at the end when you're done. So I've picked this sort of pale hot pink, if that's a real color, and a teal card. And I'm first off gonna heat emboss my African Daisy. So I'm gonna be repeat stamping this with embossing ink two or three times, so three times on this first A2 size panel that I have here. I'm using my Misty just to make sure that I get the right position and to hold it in place. I haven't actually cleaned off my stamp in between stamping, so you'll see on the second and third stamping, I'm quite careful here how I place that stamp down just so that I don't get embossing ink where I don't want it. If you're not quite as careful or you don't wanna risk it, I do recommend wiping off your stamp in between uh, each stamping. I have also treated my panel of cardstock with a lot of uh, pet powder from my powder tool just to make sure that I don't get any stray bits of embossing powder sticking where I don't want them. Now on this first panel, I'm using rose gold uh, embossing powder and I'm gonna heat emboss this, pick this image three times. You'll see those two first two times, they sort of interlocked really well together and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of floral in that bottom corner. I'm not gonna fill up the top part of the card because that's where I'm gonna put my sentiment. I wanna keep this as a one layer card. You could of course cover the entire panel with heat embossing if you wanted to and create an entire background, but I'm just leaving a little bit uh, open for my sentiment. Now on my mini slim line, which is three inches by six and a half inches, this is teal cardstock. I'm going to just stamp this twice up the edge. So I'm just gonna have the focus area being on the edge of my card panel here, and I'm using the antique silver embossing powder. I thought that would pair really nicely with this teal color, and look at that shine you get, it's just gorgeous. And I love that magic as, as the heat embossing melts, don't you? I know everyone says that, but it is true, especially when you speed it up this fast. We're gonna use two different colors of ink for our ink blending on each card today. The first ink color should be somewhat similar to the color of your colored cardstock. It doesn't have to be exact and it should certainly be darker. So I've picked this Cosmic Berry. It's like a plummy purple color. It's a little different to the hot pink. It is darker, but it'll show up really nicely on that colored cardstock. Even though this is a dye ink, which is translucent, it will darken the edges. And I'm just gonna use a large ink blending tool and go around those edges into the center and fading in towards the center, but leaving a good portion of it not with any ink on it. So I haven't ink blended over the entire panel and you'll see that it already is getting that nice halo effect. Now, to add the extra drama, I like to go in with some jet, blank, jet black ink with a smaller ink blending tool just around the edges 
um, not going in as far as I did with the Cosmic Berry. And I'm just, I wish I could ink blend this fast, seriously. I'm just going in round the edges and I will come back in with that large ink blending tool just to very so slightly blend together the jet blank, jet black, why do I keep calling it jet blank? Jet black and the Cosmic Berry. So you'll see that you get this nice blend and that really nice sort of dark vignette look. Now for my second card, obviously I have the teal card stock. I've chosen emerald crystal ink and I'm just gonna do the exact same thing again. Go around the edges. You'll see that I go in a lot more on that sort of center right hand side. I'm going right up to the edges almost of those flowers with my emerald ink. I am leaving some of the paler sort of cardstock without any ink on it in the centers of where the flowers are because at this point I wasn't sure if I was actually gonna trim around the flowers. I thought that might have looked nice, but in the end I decided not to. And I've come back in with the jet black ink again, going right around the outside edge, but not quite as far in as that emerald ink. Just to add that dark vignette, and you can see it's already looking pretty cool. Now you can wipe off the embossing powder with a cloth and I do recommend you do so you don't have any laying on top because that embossing, that melted embossing will resist the ink. That's why we can see those flowers showing through but you also wanna make sure you've wiped off any ink with a, with a dry cloth. Now, as I said, I've left that top part uh, free so I could stamp my sentiment. I've got very inky fingers from all that ink blending. Uh, I'm using Obsidian Pigment Ink. This is a pigment black ink. It's one of the best inks. I use it all the time for sentiment stamping. It's very detailed. And I'm gonna stamp You're the Cutest, which is sentiments from the painter flower African Daisy, directly onto the top. And I, I wasn't sure which sentiments I was gonna use, but these ones nestled in between those daisies perfectly. So they're the ones I used. On my mini slimline, I'm gonna step it up a bit. So I like to do this as well as add lots of splatters, particularly if you're sort of thinking about a night sky or a space scene where you're bringing in that bold edging. I like to come in with some iridescent shimmer spray and then also some of the white, pure white ink spray as well and just splatter it on quite liberally all around. And uh, I do get a big blob down at the bottom, but that's okay. I can dab that up and hide it with a sequin. It's okay. <laughs> I actually do do that. And then you can't see it just off camera. I'm also spritzing some water and it will very gently sort of um, distress that ink and you'll see some watermarks in the final card. I did want to go back and step up my pink card. So I added some antique gold splatters as well, very gently. But normally I would recommend doing that before you add the sentiment. To finish, I'm just going to add some gold sequins. Here and there, I'm just using the smaller sequins from this fantastic little cute bottle that Elton E carries in and around those splatters. And I've backed it onto a white note card made from 110 pound cardstock to finish. For my sentiment on my teal card, I've actually grabbed last month's Painter Flower because I like the stocky sentiment rather than using a sentiment uh, from the Painter Flower African Daisy. That way I didn't have to fussy cut out around the scripty sentiment. This one was much easier to just trim out and I'm going to heat emboss it in pure white on jet black cardstock and then trim it out. And I'll just pop that up using some Altenew foam tape right into the center of that card panel. And then to finish, I'm going to add some more sequins. This time I'm going to use the satin white sequins that also come in that super cute little bottle. I just love them. They're great for photos as well, you might have noticed. And that finishes both of my cards, showing you how to add drama with a bit of heat embossing and a bit of ink blending using the Painter Flower African Daisy. I hope you've enjoyed. If you did, be sure to check out my card series, Stylish Card Making Techniques with Jenny, every other Wednesday here on the Alta New channel. And for more details and more photos, as well as details of the supplies I used, you can check the description box below. Be sure to subscribe if you don't already and have a wonderful day. Bye. Hello crafters, Jen here. For more tips, techniques, tutorials, and to discover which paper crafting products are right for you, subscribe to Altenew's YouTube channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for watching.